How can you experience something new if you keep relishing in the past? If you keep relishing in the past and, and talking about the past and what happened in the past and, and what is going on. No, I'm a new creature. Shout, I'm a new creature. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on. We just want the Lord just to fill this room. Hallelujah. We just want him to fill this room. We just want him to fill this room with his praise. We just want to fill this room with praise. Hallelujah. And give the Lord the glory and the honor. Hallelujah. Come on, let's just bless his name. Thank you, Jesus. He's worthy. He's worthy. Come on, come on, come on. Just a few seconds. Just a few seconds. Before we go in the word. Before we go to the word. Come on, just lift your hands. Just put your mind on the Father. Put your mind on Jesus. Forget about everything. Forget about everything that has taken place. Whatever happened today. It doesn't matter. We can't even go back to that moment. Don't even think about what's got to take place when you leave here. But just begin to worship him right now and bless him and praise his name. Hallelujah. Come on. He's worthy. He's so worthy. He's so worthy. He's so worthy. He's so worthy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Come on. Come on, thank him, thank him, thank him, thank him, thank him. Thank him, thank him, thank him, thank him. Come on, let's pray in the spirit. I sense there's a breakthrough in the spirit. But we just need to enter into that place and just walk into that door. Hallelujah for that breakthrough. There is a breakthrough. I was feeling a breakthrough on my way here. And that heaviness has got to move. Whatever that is has been standing in the way that's blocking you and breakthrough. That thing we commanded to be moved now in the name of Jesus. And we command the stone to be rolled away. Thank you, Jesus. We command it now in the name of Jesus. You shall experience a breakthrough in this place on tonight. You shall experience a breakthrough. Hallelujah. Even as you're streaming, wherever you are, you shall receive a breakthrough. But the Lord says you got to press. Come Come on you gotta press you gotta push in for that breakthrough thank you jesus hallelujah it's here right now and it is among us it's right here but you gotta press you gotta push your way through to your breakthrough right now hallelujah hallelujah come on thank you jesus as you take your seats come on let's bless him bless the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. We're going to Galatians, the fifth chapter. Galatians, the fifth chapter, and the first verse. Thank you, Jesus, is where we will begin to read um, tonight. Welcome all of you that are streaming live. Thank God for you. We welcome you. Amen. Stand fast therefore in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. I just want to stop right there. Read that one more time. Stand fast therefore in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage hallelujah hallelujah uh, you know i really don't have a a catchy title tonight but but it's just simply and and then we'll put something catchy uh for the for the youtube of course but uh simply the lord is saying tonight uh, expressly is don't go back to bondage don't go back to bondage or what represents bondage in your life after the Lord has delivered you and has set you free from the places of bondage or from that thing of bondage. There are some things that had to come to an end. There are some things that had to be canceled out for the specific reason that it represents bondage. And it's not the will of God 
that we find ourselves in any type of bondage. But God wants us to stand and stay in that liberty. The Amplified Version says it was for this freedom that Christ set us free, completely liberating us. Therefore, keep standing firm and do not be subject again to a yoke of slavery, which you once removed. Everybody say it's been removed. Now, don't go back to it. So there are things from 2022 that we have been delivered from. There are mindsets. We have grown. You have experienced growth spiritually. And the enemy would trick you into going back to what represents bondage in your life. And so the word tonight is to remind us, to compel us, and to also show us how not to go back into uh, the things that would hold us bondage. We don't want to go back into that bondage. And our tendency is, is that things can cause us to go into bondage. The thing about this liberty is, is that when you experience the liberty of Christ, and what I need you to understand tonight is that you stand in that liberty, that freedom that Christ has given us, even when you seem restricted. See, because a lot of times when we talk about freedom now, we talk about being free from restriction and limitation. We talk a lot about financial freedom. It means I'm out of debt. I don't, I don't have any debt, you see, because debt, that's a limitation. I don't have enough money. That's a limitation. We talk about being free. I'm out of a bad relationship, so I'm free now. You know, I'm free to be me and do the things that I want to do. Uh, or, or the kids graduate and they're grown and they're gone. So now we say, I'm free. I can just travel the country, travel the world. I can do exactly what I want to do. We, we equate freedom with that expression is that I have nothing physically that can limit me or restrict me. But we've got to learn that freedom in Christ, the Bible says they that... They that live godly will suffer persecution. And that the sufferings of this world are not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed within all of us. The Bible also tells us that many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord shall deliver them out of them all. So it is up to us, the, the, the Paul says to the Galatians, number one, is stand fast. Because that tendency, there were arguments, there were arguments trying to persuade them to go back under the law. There was this whole big debate about circumcision and, and that they could not experience Christ if they had not uh, been circumcised. And so Paul was trying to get them to understand uh, that you have spiritual freedom and your spiritual freedom has to be maintained. You have to govern yourself and not allow yourself to be subjected to any type of legalism. Come on. And he also let them know in this fifth chapter that spiritual freedom is not a license for us to sin, but it is a means that we can serve others. So my freedom in Christ is not so that I can just go sin and just do what I want to do or anything that displeases God. The scripture says for all things are lawful but not expedient. There are some things that I can get away with, but it's not good for me to do that. So he begins the fifth chapter of this letter with stand fast in the liberty. Your freedom, your spiritual freedom, your freedom in Christ, number one, is your responsibility. Everybody says it's my responsibility. My responsibility. It, it, it's not in doing rituals and doing this and I've got to do this and you know everybody goes on our annual uh, 21 day fast in January and we all do that everybody becomes super saved and spiritual at the beginning of the year you cannot get in to, to most of the mega churches you got to go in the overflow everybody packs them out at the beginning of the year because I want my spirit to be right but what happens towards the middle of the year 
What happens March? What happens when the sun is out and you can put that two-piece on? Come on. What happened to all of that liberality that we had? Or what happens when things on that vision board, after you had the vision party with your girls, you don't see that vision being manifested? After you've done uh, 21 days and 30 days of affirmations and mantras and confessions and all of this, now you don't see it. You've been speaking prosperity, but now you're seeing more uh, financial lack. You've been speaking health, but the doctor is saying there's more uh, things going on with your health than before. You know, these are all the things. You've been declaring marriage and now all of a sudden it's over with. So what do we do? Do we allow ourselves to go back in bondage or do we stay in this freedom? See, freedom in Christ is not predicated upon my natural conditions or things that's going on around me. It doesn't matter what I have or what I don't have. Somebody shout, I'm free. It doesn't matter if I have this, if I've got the right amount of money in the bank. You know, it doesn't matter if my credit is here or there physically. The fact is, is that in Christ I am free. And so it is up to us to maintain this freedom that we have in Christ. That's the first thing. So how do we do that? He said, what? Stand. We've got to stand in that liberty. So stay in it. How can I stand if I allow everything to move me out of that place? Hmm. How, how, can, how can I be free? How can I, how can I keep this if I allow everything to move me? See, we begin to be moved with everything. New trends come through. New waves come through. And then we lose our freedom. New waves, new trends come through. People get hooked up into all kinds of stuff, you know. Uh, every trend, every spiritual trend, everything that goes on, we got to get into that. I mean, now we're Israelites, you know. Last week we was in the nation of Islam. Now we Israelites this week. We were Pentecostals this week. We were apostolic prophetic. Now we with this. We're in this whole new way you know eat, eat this eat this you need some protein you need some chicken now we need to be vegans and now we need to be pescatarians my grandmother said I want to try that pesca poo poo whatever y'all doing you know <laughs> Pescapulu, whatever you call it. I think I want to try to be a Pescapalian. Then in the end, she said, I want, to, I want to be a Pescapalian. You see, we get with everything that goes on. No, stand, shall stand. The Bible said, having done all else to stand, stand therefore. Stand means to remain. So this year, as you're moving into this year, this freedom that you have, this idea, this expression of freedom that came to you with this new year, because we say, I got a fresh slate, I got a clean start, I'm going to stand from January to December into the next year what? In the liberty wherewith Christ had made us free. Where did he make us free? On Calvary. We are in Christ. So in order to, to keep this freedom, it means all year long I need to stay in Christ. Yes. Come on, shout. I need to stay in Christ. I, I, I've got to stay in his presence, meaning that I've got to remain in the spirit. What does it mean to be in Christ? Um, 2 Corinthians 5 and 17 says, therefore, if any man be in Christ, shout in Christ. in Christ. And it's imperative that we understand in Christ. Because a lot of people can talk about in God, but they don't want to talk about Christ. <laughs> the kingdom has come, the kingdom of our Lord, and what? Of his Christ. So a lot of people want to talk about God. Everybody's got God. God is good. God is wonderful. But when we talk about Christ, we've got some distinctions there. And then we go through all our little philosophies about who this Christ is. He's a prophet. He's a teacher. He's just a good dude. You know, he's just a loving person, a guru. No, he's got to become your savior. And he said, if any man be where? In Christ. Are you reading this? He is what? A new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. In the Hebrew Chaldean, it simply means he is a species that has never been discovered before. 
So I don't care who knows about your past. I don't care who ran the streets with you. I don't care who hustled with you. I don't care who did it. I don't care who worked the pole with you. It doesn't matter. I'm in Christ. I'm a new creature. So I'm not going to. He has taken my sins and placed them in the sea of forgetfulness. The scripture says to remember them no more. Isaiah said, remember not the former things, for I shall do a new thing. How can you experience something new if you keep relishing in the past? If you keep relishing in the past and, and talking about the past and what happened in the past and, and what is going on. No, I'm a new creature. Shout, I'm a new creature. A new creature. Uh, tell your neighbor, say, don't you know you're a new creature? So whatever was in your past, leave that there. You've been delivered from that. The blood has wiped the slate clean. January didn't wipe your slate clean. It's the blood. The blood, the scripture says, though our sins may be uh, red as crimson, he said, I'll make them white as snow, as wool. So we've got to understand that, that he has taken those sins. I'm new. Is this helping anybody? Look at what the amplifier says, because I need you to get this. I'm new. It doesn't matter what took place last month, last week. I am new. I am in Christ. My identity, see, standing fast in that liberty that of Christ's freedom, spiritual freedom, has to do with identity. You got to know who you are. So there's too many people that don't know who they are. And that's why you can be persuaded. This is why we can move and, and be tossed and fro. Paul said, with every wind and, and every wave of doctrine that comes in, all new teachers and everything that goes on, whatever the fad is, whatever the trend is, this is what we got to go with. And we find ourselves what? In more bondage. So what they do on the reality shows, then I got to have it now because they have it on the reality shows. You know, this is reality. So they drive it, so now I've got to drive it. Doesn't matter that I'm in all types of bondage now, that I put myself under so much frustration that I frustrated my household, my family, my marriage, my life, everything that, 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 that has concerned me where peace should be is frustrated now. Why? Because I'm not standing fast. I, I need to understand my identity. I'm a new creature. We are in this world, but we are what? Not of this world. I put it on, I put it on Facebook today. I said, I am kingdom. I am not church. I left church a long time ago. Nothing church, church does not even appeal to me. Church stuff. I'm not into church stuff. Because church stuff keeps you in fear. Church stuff keeps you limited. Church stuff keeps you uh, uh, in negativity sometimes. Church folks get together and talk about what power they have and the awesomeness they have. And then before it's over on the parking lot, church folks talking about what they don't have, what they didn't get. You know, I wouldn't try that. I thought about it, but I wouldn't try that. I might as well just keep my little job, my little nine to five. You see, that's, that's, that's what church people do. Religion. But when we get in the kingdom, to the kingdom there is no end. To the kingdom there is no end. Jesus came to preach and teach the kingdom. And when we talk about stand fast, therefore, in that liberty, somebody say stay in the kingdom. Second Corinthians 5 and 17, again in the Amplified, says, says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, that is grafted in, joined to him, by faith in him as savior. You got to be your savior. He is a new creature. Reborn and renewed by the Holy Spirit. So you are not who you were when you came out of your mother's womb. Amen. In Christ you've been reborn. You've been renewed by the Holy Spirit. The old things, the previous moral and spiritual condition have passed away. Behold, new things have come because spiritual awakening brings a new life. Amen. 
Come on, shout. I'm walking in a new life. When I'm talking about standing fast in this liberty and not going back into bondage, it's my responsibility not to go back. He said, Christ have made us free and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. It's a yoke. That yoke, if you don't know what it is, that yoke is what they, they put around the ox neck or a mule or a horse when they would plow. And we don't do that anymore because we have machines, but in countries where they have to use animals, they put a yoke around their neck and that yoke of oxen, and, and they can't go anywhere except but where that leader is taking them, that person that's driving the ox. That's the only place that they can go to. And so there's a such thing as a yoke of Christ because Christ said, take Take upon my yoke and learn of, learn of me. My yoke is easy and my burdens are light. But then there is a yoke of bondage. And a lot of us take on the yoke of bondage instead of the yoke of Christ. We take the yoke of bondage, we take that Christ yoke right off because it's light, it's easy. We throw that off. We throw that off. As soon as something appeals to our flesh, well, let me go ahead and switch, switch my yoke now. Just let my flesh just drive me. You know, my flesh will just drive me where I want to go. Who's in the driver's seat of your life? I used to, I would play this song on my show, and my mother would say, stop playing that song because it sounds too bluesy. And it would say, don't let the devil ride because if you let him ride, he'll want to drive. And then the singer would say, don't do it, don't do it, don't do it. You see, you allow your flesh to drive your life when you put that yoke of bondage back on. Take that yoke of bondage off of you. Tell somebody, take that yoke of bondage off of you. Take that yoke off of you. Don't let that thing stay on you. You carry the yoke of Christ. His burden is easy. His yoke is easy. And his burden is light. We let situations cause us uh, to want to go back into things. Let's look at Numbers 14. Numbers 14, where we find ourselves looking back. And when you take on that yoke of bondage, I need you to see what you're doing. Numbers 14, and all the congregation lifted up their voice and cried, and the people wept that night. And all the children of Israel murmured against Moses and against Aaron. And the whole congregation said unto them, Would God that we had died in the land of Egypt, or would God we had died in the wilderness? And wherefore hath the Lord brought us unto this land to fall by the sword that our wives and our children shall be a prey were it not better for us to return into Egypt they had gotten to a place uh, of despair they were murmuring they were complaining they were frustrated and so they said you know what let us go back to slavery we had it better in Egypt we had it better there. They talked about the leeks and onions and, oh, we had fish and we could eat all the fish and we had leeks and onions and we had this. And now all we have is just this manna. Every day, this is all we have. This is all we get. We're in the wilderness now. I don't work for it. I don't have to harvest it. All I do is just wake up in the morning and just harvest this manna that came from heaven. They don't even know what it is. Manna means what is it? We don't even know what manna is. It just means what is it? They didn't even know what it was, but it was edible. It was like resin. The Bible said it gave us a description of what it was like, but nobody knew exactly what it was. It was a heavenly substance. See, God will provide things for you that you can't even explain. Amen. See, God will increase you in ways that you can't explain. God will sustain you in ways that you can't explain. But if you continue to look at life through the eyes of your flesh and see your opportunities through the eyes of flesh, then you will always want to do just what they did, the children of Israel. You will murmur. You will complain. You'll find yourself complaining. And you'd rather go back into bondage than to experience a new life. 
That's what you would rather do. What is it? I think at the right term, was it the Stockholm Syndrome? I think that's what it is, where they held those people captive. And after they had held them captive, taken them hostage, and what happened was, is after they were set free, the, the people that were hostage began to feel compassion for the people that was holding them hostage way before your time, Mimi. So, <laughs> Mimi, like, I don't remember that. Way before your time. But this took place. The persons that, that held them hostage, they began to feel for them, have feelings of endearment for them. They felt sorry for them. And that's what a lot of us do. We do that with the things that, that held us bondage, held us captive. And we begin to say, you know, I had it better there. That was a, you know, that he wasn't all of that, but at least, you know, I, he was there, <laughs> right? I, I wasn't by myself, you know. I, I wasn't just hugging a pillow at night. You know, he, he had, well, you know, she, she had issues, she had an attitude, but at least, you know, we had some good times. That's what we want to do. And we find ourselves wanting to go back into that. No, God said this year, go not, don't go back into that bondage. You've been brought out of depression. And take it, take it away from just thinking about people and physical situations or environments that you've been taken out of. Baby, you've been taken out of mindsets. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Your mind has changed. Your appetite has changed. Everything about you has changed. Your frequency has changed. So we find ourselves uh, trying to go back. I, I was posted about this today. I didn't realize this is what I was going to preach about. But we find ourselves trying to hang around companies and groups of people and networks of people that we just don't fit in anymore. Not that they're bad people, but we're just not on the same wavelength in thinking. We're not, we're not of the same mind. You're not a bad person. Do do what you do. I'm not going to judge you. I'm just going to quietly exit and go to where I belong. So let us not become like the Israelites who said, you know what? It, it's rough out here. And do you know why they said this? The reason why they said this is because in Numbers 13, they came back with a negative report about the promised land. They said everything we want is in the promised land. We've seen it. The spies went out. Everything we want is there. Everything God said is there. But they also said there were giants in the lands. And we are grasshoppers in their sight and our own sight. Didn't matter what the giants saw, but it mattered what they saw. The image that they held. You've got to be careful in this year and this season not to allow images of despair, images of loss, images of separation, images of frustration to persuade you to put yourself back in the bondage. Shout, I'm not going back. It doesn't matter what's taking place. I don't care what came in the mail. I'm still free. I don't care what I read in the newspaper. Do people still read newspapers? I don't care what I read. Come on. I'm going to stay free. I don't care who sent me a mad text in the middle of the night. I'm going to stay in my freedom. Shout, I'm staying in this. I, I'm living in this. This is the place that I'm living in. I'm free from bondage. I'm free from drama. I'm free from this frustration because freedom in Christ takes me out of materiality and it puts me in spirituality. So my freedom, my happiness, my joy, my life is not based upon any more physical conditions, but it's because I'm walking in Christ. Oh my God. And I I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. Everything can happen for me. Everything can happen for you as long as you stay in Christ. Come on, shout. I got to stay in this mindset. I, I, I've got to stay in this level of freedom, and I can't allow anything to take me out of this, to take me out of this level of freedom that God has brought me into. Let's go to the book of Daniel, and I'm getting ready uh, to bring it, uh, to close this message out. I, I think I've said enough to get the point to you on tonight about where we are going. Daniel, the third chapter. 
I don't have time to read all of it, but Daniel, the third chapter, <clears throat> and this will sum up what I've been trying to express to you tonight. Daniel, the third chapter, because I'm standing in my freedom, so I'm not going to allow sin to cause me to go in bondage. I'm not going back to what he delivered me out of, so I'm not going back to that. I'm not going back to conditions, people, places, or things that have brought bondage into my life. I'm not going back to mindsets and attitudes that have brought bondage into my life. I'm not going to allow negative reports or, or people's doubts and fears, because people will project their doubts on you. People will project their fears upon you. And if you're not strong in your mind, see, in order to stand, you got to learn to be strong in your mind. There are too many people that's weak in mind. There are too many believers that are weak in mind. Whatever comes along, whoever gets on TV, whoever has the trending viral video, then we follow these people until a scandal comes out and everybody's like, whoa, wait a minute. I was taking relationship advice from this man and he got five women cheating on them, though his wife, and wait a minute, girl, can you imagine that? Come on. Stand fast, shall stand fast. You got to learn to think for yourself. Come on, kingdom. That's why I'm talking about kingdom and not church, because there are two different ways of thinking. So I got to learn to be strong and be firm in what I believe and what I know and be strong and firm in my thinking. I'm not changing for somebody else. I'm changing only as God expands me and causes me to change. But my change is not because of what other people are doing. You've got to learn to think for yourself. Listen, listen. If you don't think for yourself, the elites will think for you. They will think for you. That 1% will think for you. And they do it with ESPN, CNN, MSNBC, Fox News, all of these media outlets. They think for you. They tell you when you need to be afraid. They tell us when we're going to have the flu. Now, all year long, you mean to tell me the flu virus on the flu only activates one time a year when the news says it's activated at this season, this month? Month, we all get the flu. Man, the flu is like crawfish season. Come on. You know, we got a flu season. The virus just disappears and then all of a sudden, here we go with what is going on. I'm not saying we don't be careful. Yes, be careful, be cautious, but not overly cautious to where you're so fearful that you no longer live life. I know people have not been out of their home, have not been around people since the pandemic. And I've told some people, listen, death can find you in whatever shape you're in. There are some healthy people that they just are burying this week that have died. We woke up, saw it on Facebook, so-and-so died. What happened? We don't know. How did this, it was such a young person. How did this, see, they tell you what to think. They tell you what to eat. They tell you what to wear. They tell you what to drive. And what do we do? We make fun of the people that go against the grain. We make fun of the people who says, well, I like my fashion from the 80s. I'm going to keep wearing my shoulder pads, see? And you make fun of them. Look at that. They're old-fashioned. Nobody wears that anymore. Nobody talks like that anymore. The speech has changed. I listen to my students. The accents have changed. The way people talk, you know, it's not bruh. It's not bro. It's bruh. I told them you sound like frog. Bruh, bruh, bruh. I'm like, what is it, bruh? Tell my son, you sound like a frog. Stop saying, bruh. I mean, you know, everything. We're being influenced. Come on, we're being influenced. And what is it doing? It's taking us into slavery. It's taking us into bondage. It said they're telling us how we're supposed to live. They're telling us where we're supposed to live. They're telling us all of this, what we should study, what the trends are. These careers are, are no longer popular. These degrees are no longer popular. That's not the way we do it anymore. Stand fast. Come on. God has given you uh, to be a free 
thinking agent and you've got to learn to think for yourself and whatever God has called you to do then you don't have to change with anybody else come on you don't have to change your message you don't have to change your song for anybody else because that is supposedly the popular thing to do and you find yourself in bondage Come on, this thing was so serious, I didn't mean to go. I wasn't even going into those places. These, these, th even Abraham, Abraham told the king of Sodom, he said, I won't take anything from you. He said, lest you say you blessed me. He said, God is my reward. It's some folks' gifts you need to turn down. If some people will come to you, and I'll encourage ministers, it's some people's seeds you don't even need to take. You need to turn it down. You need to be like Elijah when he told the man, I won't take anything from you. And his servant went behind him and said, say, man, give me that gold. <laughs> he don't know what he's talking about. You know, we got some bills we need to pay. Let me just go ahead and get this little gold, and I'll just hide it. And then the next thing you know, when Elijah said, what did you do? Well, you know, I just went back and I took it. He said, I said, don't take it. He said, leprosy is upon you. And Gehazi became cursed. The Bible says it became white with leprosy in that moment. Come on, because you can't take everything from everybody. Don't bow to the image. Stand fast. Stand fast in the liberty wherewith Christ have made you free. See, we, we like to talk about the wealth. We like to talk about the abundance. We like to talk about the prosperity. We like to talk about those things, but we really don't want to talk about how to get there. The, the only way you're going to get there is you've got to learn how to start thinking for yourself. You've got to become a kingdom thinker. Some person, a famous person says, this is the book to read. Celery went up. Celery went up. Because some celebrity said, oh, I read this book. And this book says celery will heal everything in your body. So everybody went on the celery. Every morning, juice and celery. I was juice and celery too, just nasty. I mean, it's, it really is gross. But, I mean, I can handle it. You know, it's healing you on the inside. It's healing your gut. It's healing this. It's healing that. Then you read about the salt content in the celery. So it's damaging your kidneys. You've got high blood pressure. We were on the grapefruit diet. Everybody said get grapefruits. But people on blood pressure medicine didn't know that you can't eat grapefruits when you're taking blood pressure medicine. You see, all of this happens. So what happened to stores puts increased the price of celery. Celery went up because some celebrity said, so everybody's drink, eat, drinking celery every morning. Big jars of celery every morning. We juice the celery. It's healing me. I did it. I said, I ain't felt nothing. He ain't done anything for me. I, I didn't see anything. No. I learned in the scripture. If you really want to get a, a healing experience, then you go on the book of Daniel. You go on the Daniel diet. You go on the Daniel diet. You take those things out of your, out of your diet. Just go on a total plant-based. I'm not talking about this soy mix stuff. And just get you some fruits and vegetables. That's all you need and some water. And just eat that and stop eating up everything. You'll feel better in about just in a week. You'll feel better. Your skin will clear up. Your eyes will clear up. You'll feel healthier. All of that. So you don't need anybody to tell you that. Come on, shout. I don't need anybody to tell me what to do. I don't need anybody to tell me what to do. See, I don't lost some people there. See, we don't need everybody to tell us what to do. The king, Nebuchadnezzar, he put up what? An image. And they told them, they said, when you hear the music, when you hear the music, the, the cornet, the flute, the harp, the sackbut, the psaltery, the dulcimer, and all kinds of music, you shall fall down and worship the golden image that Nebuchadnezzar the king has set up. And whoso falleth not down and worship shall be the same hour be cast into the midst of the burning fiery furnace. They put an image up and they want you to dance to the music. This is how we've got to become kingdom thinkers, kingdom believers. See, the thing that is troubling you the most, I want to tell you that's the thing that God is calling you to address. 
the thing that is burdening you the most, the thing that just makes your blood boil when you see it on the news, that's the thing that God is speaking to you, that you have an answer, you have a solution. If you are so burdened when you see homeless people on the street, I guarantee you there's something in you for them. If you're burdened when you see the condition uh, of young men, there's something in you. Or kids or women or what have you, there's something in you. But you got to learn not to bow to the images that they are giving to us. You don't have to be depressed. You don't have to be defeated because they told us if you go through these things, if you've been through this, if you've lived this life, then this is supposed to be the end of your life. According to everything statistically, psychologically, uh, uh, economically, because of the circumstances of my birth, I'm not supposed to be standing here tonight. If I had fallen prey or if my mother had fallen prey to statistics, we would not be standing here tonight. But it's going to take some thinking, some kingdom thinking, standing fast in the mind of Christ. Know ye not that ye have the mind of Christ. You have this mind. It's a new mind. Don't dance at the image that they're giving to you. That's why we're in debt. That's why we're sick. That's why we're fearful. That's why we're getting divorced. That's why our churches are empty. That's why we have everything we've got going on in the White House. Why? It's because we're dancing to the images. So what must you do? You got to be like Shadrach, Meshach. When I was a little boy, they said in a bad Negro. <laughs> a bad Negro. <laughs> you got to be like them. They said, we have not regarded thee. They serve not thy gods nor worship. We will not bow down. They said, listen, these three dudes have not regarded you. They, have, they will not bow down. They have not worshipped. And when the music played, and the commandment is, is that you've got to put them in the fiery furnace. Nebuchadnezzar went to him and he asked him in the 14th verse, he said, is it true? They said, it's true. They said, we will not worship. The 16th verse, they said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer thee in this matter. If it be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace, and he will deliver us out of thine hand, O king. But if not, be it known unto thee, O king, that we will not serve thy gods, nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up. Then was Nebuchadnezzar full of fury. Let me tell you, they will become mad as hell at you when you know who you are. People don't like you when you know who you are. People don't like you when you know what you believe. And when you're firm in it. And you will not allow anything or any circumstance to persuade you to give up upon your confession of what you believe. You, they become full of fury. The world is furious with the kingdom right now. The kingdom of darkness is furious with the kingdom of God right now because we declare we will not bow. We will not be defeated. We will not be victimized. We will not be marginalized. Come on. We will not allow ourselves to be subjected to anything. We ain't taking every pill y'all tell us to take. We're not going to talk about we depressed. We're not going to be talking about we angry black women because black men didn't do this. We're not going to be talking about, well, I can't have no black friends because white folks did this. No, we're not going to do that. I'm not bowing to that. Come on, somebody shout, I'm not bowing to that. I'm not giving in to this. I'm not giving in to I'm broke. I'm not giving it. I'm not speaking this stuff over my life. Stop speaking everything that they told you over your life because you are this ethnic group and this age. You got to have this. You must have high blood pressure. You have to have diabetes. Come on. You got to have all of this stuff. You're supposed to be broke. You're not supposed to have any good credit. All of this stuff is supposed to take place. You're 
know, uh, uh, because of what they say, shout, I'm not bowing to the image. And they got mad at them. And they said, we're going to put you in that fire. Some of us need to understand tonight that what you're going through is simply because they have put us in the fire. The church is in the fire right now. The kingdom is under fire right now. And we can't change our confession. What we believe, we got to stand fast in what we believe. We've got to know who we believe in. We've got to tell the world that we believe that there is a risen Savior and he is the Lord come on we got to believe we got to tell them that that it doesn't matter if you have a Rolls Royce or a Bentley it doesn't matter if you have a house on the top of the hill that I've got a freedom in Christ hallelujah that is a freedom that I have found and nothing can hinder me or stop me come on begin to shout I am unstoppable he said in his word that his kingdom there shall be no end. You represent the kingdom of God and nothing can stop you. Nothing can limit you. And if they put us in the fire, that's what they said. If you want to put us in the fire, put us in the fire. We don't care because God is able to deliver us. Somebody shout, he's able to deliver me. Oh my God, I feel like preaching now, but it's time to go home. Somebody shout, he's able to deliver me. No matter what you do, you can lie on me, you can criticize me, you can make fun of me, you can walk away from me, you can scandalize me on the internet, you can start smear campaigns if you want to, but tell them God is able to deliver me. Yes, he is. He's able to deliver me in any circumstance, in any situation. He will deliver us. Come on, somebody say he's able. Whether he does it or not, I can shout tonight because I know he's able. Whether it changes for me physically or not, I know God is able. Whether the doctor gives me a report that says he doesn't see it anymore, I know that God is still able. I can pray for my marriage to be restored, but they can still divorce me, but I still know that God is able. They can close the doors in your face, but you still know that God is what he's able. And the Bible says that they took them and they put them in that fire. They heated it up even the more, three times hotter. And when they put them in the midst of the fire, the Bible says that they looked down in the fire. And when they looked in the fire, they saw them walking around. <laughs> Tell your neighbor that this year you are fireproof. I need you to know I'm fireproof. I'm in a fire right now. Things are burning up around me. <laughs> but shout, I'm fireproof. <laughs> because Christ is in me. <laughs> when they went in the fire... <laughs> The Bible said they threw him in the midst of the fire. But when they looked down at them, they said that they were loosed. Not only were there three men, but the 25th verse said, I see four men loose. Shout, I'm going to get loose in the fire. Years ago, I preached a message that said, be careful where you drop me. They bound them up and they put them in the fire. But the fire only burned the chains that were on their hands and feet. And the Bible said there were four men walking it with them. And they said walking in the midst of the fire. They have no hurt. But it's something strange about the fourth person. It's something peculiar about the fourth man. Ask your neighbor, do you know who the fourth man is? When they looked in the fire, they saw the fourth man. And they said, but the fourth man, his form is like the Son of God. That's a good place for me to leave on. I've got freedom in Christ. I'm going to stand in my freedom. You can throw me in the midst of the fire if you want to. But he'll walk with you in the midst of the fire who was the fourth man it was jesus 
that stood with them in the midst of a fire. High five your neighbor. I wish I could get 12. I'll make one and tell him, Jesus, he'll go with you in the midst of a fire. David said, Lord, if I go in heaven, you are there with me. If I make my bed in hell, you are there with me. Wherever I go, he's there with me. Shout, stand fast. No money in the bank. I'm going to stand fast. No Valentine date. I'm going to stand fast. Everybody's getting married but you. I'm going to stand fast. My friends have turned their back on me. I'm going to stand fast in my freedom, in my liberty. I won't go back to bondage. I won't go back to depression. I won't go back to defeat. I won't go back to my addiction. I won't go back to the past. I won't go back to the streets because he set me free. Tell him I'm free. Somebody shout, I'm free. Oh, I'm free. <laughs> Say yes. Say yes. Say yes. Tell two or three people, I won't go back. Tell them I can't go back. I refuse to go back. I got to stand in this thing. Come on, shall I stand in this thing? I'm going to stay in that liberty. I am persuaded that neither heights nor death, nor angels nor demons, nor men, not things present, nor things to come. I am persuaded that nothing, no thing shall separate us from the love of God shout I'm not going back no I will not go back I will not go back if the Lord has set me free then why should I be bound he set me free come on and praise God for that freedom right now thank you Jesus the beginning of freedom, the beginning of spiritual freedom to stand fast is you must have a relationship with Jesus. You've got to know him and the pardon of your sins. I don't care what anybody says. I don't care about all of the other prophets, the other spiritual teachers. Yes, they may have done some good things, but there is only one that went on a cross and died. And three days later, he got up. And that's Jesus Christ. I'm convinced there's only one that has proven, proven who he is. And that is Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. It's not the will of God that any man should perish. Hell was never created for man. Hell was created for the devil. The Bible said that hell hath enlarged itself because of man. God never created a hell for man. Hallelujah. But John says that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And whosoever believeth in him should not perish but will have everlasting life. If you don't know Jesus, no matter the day, the time, or the hour that you may be hearing or viewing this broadcast, if you don't know Jesus, I just want you to simply say, Lord Jesus, I repent of my sins and I believe that you died and on the third day you rose again. I receive you as my Lord I receive you as my Savior, and I declare that I am saved. 
Jesus is now in my heart. Jesus is now in my life. I'm free from sin. I'm free from sin. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, if you prayed that prayer for the first time, if you're in Houston, I want to invite you to join us at Prevailing Life this Sunday at 1030, 3116 Tell Street, Houston, Texas. If you're elsewhere, I want you to find yourself a Bible teaching church, not just a preaching church, but you need a church where you can be taught a man, a woman of God that will teach you the word, that will teach you how to have this new relationship with Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. If you would like to support this ministry, you can do so by way of Cash App, dollar sign, Rich Living 777. Or you can go to the PayPal. PayPal is uh, paypal.me forward slash Rich Living 777. Amen. God bless you. The light of God surrounds you. The love of God enfolds you. The power of God protects you. The presence of God watches over you. And wherever we are, God is. Wherever you are, God is. Wherever I am, God is. And so it is. Amen. God bless you.